Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Tips and Tricks number 16, Ripple in Capacitors and Inductors. This video is related to the previous one, Tips and Tricks number 15, Low Pass LC Filter Design. I think that is worth clarifying some points related to the calculation of current ripple in inductors and voltage ripple in capacitors, so this is the motivation of this video today. Before starting, I want to thank our industry medicinas Frenetic for their support. Frenetic works on the optimization of power converters using artificial intelligence. If you want to try their software, you can do so by using the link provided in the description of this video. So the motivation of this video is to start showing and clarifying the operation of capacitors and inductors and the calculation of ripple in both capacitors and inductors. So firstly, we are going to see clearly the duality that we have when working with capacitors and inductors. Here we have a capacitor, we have the voltage across the capacitor, we have the current through the capacitor, and another very important parameter in a capacitor is the charge stored in the capacitor. In the case of inductors, we have, of course, the voltage across the inductor, the current through the inductor, and the other important magnitude that we have in inductors is the flux linkage, which is equal to the number of terms times the flux through one of the terms of the inductor. So now we can see that there is a duality in the different variables that we have in inductors and capacitors. For example, here we have the differential equation, which is that the current through the capacitor is the capacitance times the derivative of the capacitor's voltage with respect to time. So current is equivalent to voltage in the case of an inductor. The current through the capacitor is equivalent to the voltage because the voltage across the inductor is the inductance times the derivative of the current through the inductor with respect to time. So we can see that in this differential equation, if we substitute current by voltage and voltage here by current, we get the equivalent differential equation for the case of the inductor. Another equivalence is here we have the charge stored in the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor. So charge is equivalent, is dual to the flux linkage in an inductor. The flux linkage is the inductance times the current through the inductor. So again, if we substitute here voltage by current, capacitance by inductance, and charge by flux linkage, we have this equivalent equation. Also, in a capacitor, we have the current through the capacitor is the derivative of the charge with respect to time. So again, current is equivalent to voltage and charge is equivalent to flux linkage. So in an inductor, we can say that the voltage across the inductor is the derivative of the flux linkage with respect to time. And of course, we have that the capacitance is equivalent to the inductance. Regarding the energy that we have stored in a capacitor, it's a similar situation. The energy is 1 over 2 times the charge times the voltage, or 1 over 2 times the capacitance times the voltage squared. In the case of an inductor, we substitute charge by flux linkage, voltage by current, and we have this equation, and because flux linkage is the inductance times current, we can say also 1 over 2 times inductance times the current through the inductor squared. So let's see now a couple of examples of ripple calculation. Here on the left, we have an example of voltage ripple in capacitors in which we are injecting a current like this a triangular waveform into the capacitor. 
So in this area here, when the current is positive, we are injecting a charge into the capacitor. So the voltage is going to increase from a minimum value up to a maximum value. And then in the other area here, when the current is negative, we are removing charge from the capacitor. So the voltage is decreasing like this, from a maximum value to a minimum value. In this case, because the evolution of the current is linear, and taking into account the differential equation of the capacitor, during this interval from this point to this point, the voltage can be calculated as the integral of the current. So we have this parabolic evolution of the voltage. During this other interval from this point to this point, the current decreases linearly, so we have this parabolic evolution of the voltage. Usually we are interested in the peak-to-peak -peak voltage ripple, and we can calculate this voltage using this equation here. The peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 1 over the capacitance times the charge that we are injecting or removing from the capacitor and that we can calculate using this integral here, so is this area or this area here. In the case of inductors, we have a similar situation. In this case, we have an example in which we are applying a voltage across the inductor, which is constant, positive during this interval, and then negative during this other interval. Of course, as we know, the average voltage across an inductor it has to be equal to zero. So this is the zero level. This is the similar situation in the case of the current through a capacitor. The average current is zero. So in this case, this area here corresponds to the increment in the flux linkage. And this area here is a decrement of the flux linkage. So again, this is the differential equation of the inductor. So if we want to calculate the current, we have to do the integral of the voltage. And because this is constant, then we have a ramp for the current circulating through the inductor. In this case, the ramp is positive because the voltage is positive. And in this case, because the voltage is negative, we have a negative ramp for the current. Usually we are interested again in the peak to peak ripple of the current through the inductor, we can calculate this peak-to-peak -peak ripple by doing 1 over L times the increment of the flux linkage that we can calculate with this area here or this area here, and it can be obtained doing the integral as shown here. So as we can see, everything is again dual between capacitors and inductors. But note that because of the duality, we can also invert the examples. So if we apply a triangular waveform of voltage across the inductor here, then the current ripple is going to be parabolic, as shown here. And we can calculate the peak-to-peak -peak current ripple by obtaining these areas corresponding to the increment and the decrement of the flux linkage that can be obtained using this expression here by doing this integral and then we can obtain using this equation the peak-to-peak -peak current ripple and also we can apply a square waveform of current as shown here through the capacitor and then we will have a triangular waveform of voltage across the capacitor and the peak-to-peak -peak voltage across the capacitor can be obtained using this expression in which the increment of the charge corresponds to this area here or this area here in the case of the decrement of the charge. So once again, we can see that everything is dual between inductors and capacitors. So let's see now the case of the LC filter design that we studied in this previous video, tips and tricks number 15. Today we can see how to do the exact analysis of the calculation of the inductor here to have a given current ripple through the inductor. So we saw in this previous video that the voltage that we have here 
at the output of the rectifier is like this. So assuming that the output voltage is almost constant with very low voltage ripple, we can calculate the voltage across the inductor by the difference between the rectifier voltage and the output voltage and we will have a waveform like this. So we have a positive part and a negative part. This positive area here corresponds to the increment of the flux linkage and this negative area here corresponds to the decrement of the flux linkage. So if we want to calculate exactly the current ripple that we are going to have, we need to calculate this increment of the flux linkage and then apply this equation. But this is quite difficult because to calculate this area, we need to obtain exactly these points, these instants, t sub 1 and t sub 2, and then do the integral. So this is not easy to do. And this is why in previous video, tips and tricks number 15, we used the first harmonic approximation to get quickly the ripple that we are going to have in the inductor. This is an approximation, but because this is a filter, this is a quite good approximation for most of the cases. Here we have how we did it in previous video. This is the rectifier voltage, so we have approximated this voltage with the average value and the first harmonic. So the first harmonic is the voltage that we are applying across the inductor. This is an approximation to the actual voltage. And then by doing the integral, we can calculate the flux linkage. And from it, then we can calculate the value of the inductance by the ratio of the peak value of the flux linkage and the peak value of the current through the inductor. This is equivalent to calculating the area of the flux linkage and applying the formula that we have seen before. And this is the final value that we got for the inductance. If you want to have more information about this example, please take a look at the previous video, Tips and Tricks number 15. Finally, I think that it's also interesting to see the duality between capacitors and inductors in frequency domain. So for this, we only have to take into account that the derivative of a variable with respect to time is equivalent to multiply the phasor by the factor j omega. So with this, we can establish the same duality. The phasor of the current through a capacitor is equivalent to the phasor of the voltage across an inductor. And the current through the capacitor is the factor J omega times C times the voltage, the phasor of the voltage across the capacitor. And similarly, the voltage across the inductor, the phasor of the voltage across the inductor is J omega L times the phasor of the current through the inductor. We can also talk about the phasor of the charge in the capacitor, which is the capacitance C times the phasor of the voltage. Same thing for the phasor of the flux linkage, which is equal to the inductance times the phasor of the current through the inductor. And also the phasor of the current through the capacitor is J omega times the phasor of the charge and the phasor of the voltage across the inductor is J omega times the flux linkage phasor. And of course, C is dual with L. Well, with this, we finish this presentation today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question using the comments box of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.